Good morning, my children, and once again, welcome back to your English class, the class of the teacher Jacob. For today, my children, we are going to continue with the topic about letters of the alphabet. Remember, here in Kinder 2, we have to learn all the letters in capital form and in small form. Recuerden, chicos, que ahorita vamos a continuar con nuestro tema de las letras del abecedario. Recuerden que en Kinder 2 tenemos que estudiar, repasar y recordar todas las letras en sus dos formas. Letras mayúsculas, with the teacher they are called capital letters, and letras minúsculas, which in English are small letters. The last letter we saw was the letter B. We learn it in capital form. Remember, capital B is like the number 8. It's not the same because one is a letter and the other is a number, but both of them are similar. Recuerden, chicos, que la B mayúscula tiene forma del número 8, pero no se vayan a confundir. Una es una letra y el otro es un número. So, Capital B, as all of the letters, they have a small form. Como todas las letras, la B mayúscula va a tener una letra minúscula, which is the letter of today. Va a ser la letra que vamos a trabajar el día de hoy. Small B. Now, the letter small B is a circle with a vertical line next to it. Como pueden ver, B mayúscula es un círculo con una línea vertical al lado de este. ¿Ok? That's the, copy. That's the small b. Now, let's see what objects can we use for this letter. Vamos ahora a ver qué, podemos, qué objetos podemos encontrar con esta letra. For a small b, we have the bone. Now, the bone... It's part of the family of food, but in this case, it's the, fe, the, the dog's favorite food. In Spanish, bone is hueso. El hueso se puede decir que pertenece a la familia de la comida, porque pues el pollo, cuando nosotros no lo terminamos, quedan los puros huesitos. Esos huesitos son los que nosotros a veces se los damos a los perros para que tengan algo de comer. Okay, so the word bone in, in, in Spanish, remember, hueso. Now, what are the colors of the bones? Colors of the bones are general color white, but sometimes can be color yellow. For example, once again, in the case of the bones of chickens, the bones of the chickens are color yellow. The bones of people like us They are color white. Recuerden, chicos, que cuando nosotros hablamos acerca de los colores de un hueso, pues puede variar de acuerdo al animal o a la persona. En el caso de un ser humano como nosotros, los huesos son de color white, de color blanco. In the case of chickens, en el caso de los pollos, o a lo mejor de alguna gallina, puede que sean de color brown o color yellow. Puede que sean de color café o color yellow. ¿Ok? Very good. Now, next to the bone, the next object that uses small b are boots. Now, the boots are part of the family of the shoes. Another member of shoes can be the tennis shoes, can be the shoes, normal shoes, can be sandals, can be flip-flops. In Spanish, we also have guaraches. All of those belong to the family of shoes. Recuerden, chicos, que la familia de los zapatos tiene como miembros los tenis, guaraches, sandalias, a lo mejor eh, otro eh, pantuflas. Okay, that's the that's the other word I was looking for pantuflas y dentro de esa familia de los zapatos we have the boots tenemos las botas now the difference between a shoe and a boot 
it's that boots are larger, okay? They are bigger. Recuerden, chicos, que una diferencia entre un zapato normal y una bota, pues es su tamaño. Las botas son más largas, verticalmente son más amplias, ¿ok? Y los zapatos, pues recuerden que son cortitos. That's one of the big differences. Speaking about colors, for the boots, can we have boots with color brown, with color brown, uh, black, with color navy blue, azul marino, especially dark colors. Las botas, al igual que los zapatos, tienen un tono mucho más oscuro. Okay, so we have the boots with small b. Now before we continue with the topic of today, let's have a review of yesterday's video because when I was discussing the color for the shoes, I mentioned it color brown. Now yesterday's activity was all about this color. Do you remember some of the objects or can you mention Objects that have color brown. Antes de continuar con nuestro tema, eh, vamos a hacer un repaso de lo que estuvimos trabajando el día de ayer, que era el color brown. Ahorita que estaba comentando acerca de los colores que podemos encontrar en botas y zapatos, mencioné el color brown. Así es que ustedes, de las actividades que realizaron ayer, de los objetos que yo les expliqué, recuerdan algunos que sean de color brown, or when you cut it from a magazine or a newspaper, do you remember objects that contain this color? Ustedes cuando hicieron sus actividades de recortar de una, de una revista o de un periódico objetos de color brown, recuerdan lo que recortaron? Could you mention the objects? Me pueden decir qué objetos encontraron con este color. The dog, very good. A cat, a bird, a mouse. Now there is a there is a fruit that is called coconut. The coconut, remember, is like a circle completely color brown. In Spanish, coconut, coco. Recuerden que el coco es una fruta que se encuentra en las palmeras de las islas. Okay? Y el coco es un círculo de color brown. Another object that you mentioned in my children was the guitar. Speaking about Coco, remember Miguel, the character from the movie Coco, he plays a guitar. Guitars, most of them have color brown. Very good. A shirt, una camisa. Shoes, talking about boots. Shoes can also be with color brown. Excellent. Okay, that's interesting. One more object with color brown and that's it. That you remember. Okay, those examples were excellent. So, thank you. Remember, this is very important because by asking you this, you are telling me that you did your homework and the teacher is very happy. Recuerden chicos que yo al hacer estas preguntas acerca de qué fue lo que vimos la vez pasada, recuerda lo que hicimos, recuerda que hicieron en su tarea, a mí me consta que sí hicieron sus actividades, hicieron su tarea, por lo tanto me pone muy feliz. Now, let's go back with today's topic, small b. Let's practice our pronunciation exercise for these two brand new objects. Remember, the teacher Jacob says it first. Repeat after me with all of your energy. Vamos a comenzar con nuestro ejercicio de repaso. Recuerden que para esto, el teachercito Jacob va a decir primero el objeto y la letra. Repitan después de mí con toda su energía para que los pueda escuchar desde donde se encuentre. ¡Boom! Small b. Remember, the pronunciation of this letter is not e, p, it's b. Okay? Very good. Once again, repeat after me, please. Bone. Small b. Okay? Let's continue with the next object. Boots. 
Once again, with all of your energy. Boots. Small B. Remember, boots in Spanish, botas. Now, today's activity, my children, are part once again of your teddy book, and they are located right here. For today, we have two pages. Page number one, small b, boots. Page number two, small b, bone. Now, the most important part of these two exercises are, of course, the tracing of the small b. Recuerden, chicos, que lo más importante para estos dos ejercicios es el trazo de la letra B minúscula. So, using your pencil, grabbing it properly, remember three fingers to create a pink cloth. We are going to hold our pencil and we are going to trace all small b's. Recuerden, chicos, que vamos a eh, agarrar nuestro lápiz, lo vamos a sujetar correctamente con tres deditos en forma de pincita para sostenerlo con mucha fuerza. Vamos a remarcar todas las small b que aparezcan en esa plana. Remember, while we are tracing the letter, mientras nosotros remarcamos la palabra, don't forget to repeat the name. No se les olvide repetir el nombre para que de esa forma no se nos no se nos borre de nuestra cabecita. Small b. Small b. Small b is for bone. Bone in Spanish, hueso. Small b. Remember, small b is for bone. Now remember, you in your teddy book, you have more examples to trace with the letter B. The teacher Jacob only has a few because I have to continue with the explanations. Now this is a video, you can, you can hit pause, the, the pause button whenever you want. After you have finished, you can continue with uh, the, the next part of the video. Recuerden chicos que ustedes en su trabajo tienen mucho más ejemplos que remarcar. Recuerden remarcar los completos todos, todos. Ustedes si, eh, si quieren pueden ponerle pausa a su video para que terminen su trabajo. Después denle play para que podamos continuar. Recuerden que yo, yo necesito seguir explicando para que de esa forma no hagamos un video tan grande. Ok, very good. Now, after we have finished with the small b, let's paint the bone. Now, like I mentioned, for bone, we can use color white or color yellow. Because if we use color white, we will not see the color. So, it's better to work with the color yellow. Recuerden, chicos, que para el hueso podemos utilizar color blanco o color amarillo. Si nosotros utilizamos blanco, no se va a ver. Por lo tanto, es mejor si trabajamos con amarillo. Now, let me look in my colors here it is color yellow let's paint the bone bone the bone it's dog's favorite food the word bone in spanish hueso y el hueso es la comida favorita de los perros very good. After we have finished painting the bone with the color yellow, the final part of the exercise, small b. For small b, we can use any color that you want. The teacher Jacob will use color pink. Small b. Small b. The letter b, it's the letter for bone. The word bone begins with small b. Okay. Now, let's continue with the second exercise. Remember, once again, for the second exercise, 
the first thing, the, the most important part is to trace a small bit, all of them. So, using your pencil, holding it properly, let's trace small beads. Small B. The word boot uses small B. Now, boot in Spanish, bota. Boot begins with the small B. Now, remember, you in your second activity, you have more examples to trace after you finish we continue with the object. Now remember, boot in Spanish, bota. The color of the boots can, be, can have color brown, color black, or color navy blue. For this, I will use navy blue. Navy blue in Spanish, azul marino. Boots. Boots are part of the shoes. Boots can have different colors. The word boot begins with a small B. After we have finished with, this, with the boots, we continue with the small B. Or a small B, once again, you can choose your color the teacher Jacob will use color pink once again. Small B. Small B. The letter of boots. The word boots begin with the small B. That's it. We have finished the two exercises of today. Now, that's it for today, my children. But before we go, remember, we already started with the letters of the alphabet. So even though right now we have only seen two, it's very important that you practice them, review them, and continue studying them constantly. Recuerden, chicos, que nosotros ya empezamos a trabajar con nuestras letras del abecedario. Aunque solamente hemos visto dos, es importante que estas dos las sigan repasando, sigan trabajando con ellas, sigan viendo cómo se escriben en mayúsculas, minúsculas, porque cuando, porque cuando lleguemos a ver mucho más letras nos podemos llegar a confundir, se nos pueden llegar a olvidar. Por lo tanto es muy importante que siempre, siempre que trabajemos con una nueva letra ya sea en forma mayúscula o minúscula, la, la repasen en su tiempo libre. Antes de dormir o después o antes de jugar, es importante que le dediquen otro pequeño tiempo a las actividades, trabajos y temas que veamos en la clase de Teacher Cito Jake. So, we see you tomorrow with more information, more letters, more objects, and of course, more fun with the Teacher Jacob. Have an excellent day. Take care. Goodbye.